Tesla just accidentally made a shocking announcement about the Model Y that spells some very bad news for this model. Let me tell you what Tesla just revealed and why things are not looking good at all for the Model Y. Plus, Tesla is once again raising prices on multiple models and new multiple options. Tesla's working to add a couple of new options that should be good on some models, but also Tesla continues to remove features from their cars and owners are frustrated and absolutely sick of it. Let me tell you why Tesla owners are so upset right now with one huge change in particular. So let's start with some of the good news first before we get into some of the bad news. Uh, starting first with some new Tesla colors. The company just introduced a new color here in the US on two Teslas. This is Stealth Gray, a new modern, sort of a silver matty option that's included right now just on the Model S and Model X or is it? With the introduction of this new color, Tesla has made all colors on the S and the X totally free internationally, a nice perk if you opt for Tesla's uh, more expensive vehicle on the higher end there. But also some of you might remember that uh, we've heard of Stealth Gray before, We've even heard of Ultra Red before. Yes, this is one of the new colors coming directly from the new Refresh Model 3, Highland Model 3, whatever you want to call it, over there in China and Europe. This is a color on that vehicle. And now Tesla is bringing that color over to the Model S and Model X and looks beautiful on these cars, but still not on the now older Model 3 and also not on the Model Y either. Don't get me wrong, I'm all for new colors and I'm especially all for Tesla making colors free. That is super cool to see as I believe like the higher end options like ultra red used to be like $3,000, $3,500. So that is great to see. But what I don't like right now is that Tesla's lineup is getting incredibly inconsistent around the world. And this example of colors is a great illustration. Here in the US, colors on the Model 3 and Model Y have not changed at all since these vehicles hit the road a couple of years ago. The Model S and Model X not only now have free colors, like I mentioned, but also there have now been two new additions to the lineup in the form of Ultra Red and now Stealth Gray. Internationally, you can get this all new Model 3 in Stealth Gray and Ultra Red as two of the nice new color options. And also, if you get your Model Y that's uh, in the European market made from Giga Berlin, you have the option of Midnight Cherry and Quicksilver only in that market. So it's very confusing as of right now what uh, market gets which color, if you can get it on the 3 or the Y or the S or the X, how much is going to be. It is very expensive and there seems to be no uh, clear path towards streamlining this either. There of course have been some rumors as of the last couple of weeks that Tesla is working on some new colors at Giga Texas, potentially for the Model Y in the not too distant future. But uh, as of right now, there is no news on that just yet. And speaking of colors, I've got some bad news on this front as well. Tesla is set to raise the price of their black paint offering up from $1,500 to $2,000. And with that $500 increase, it's now one of the most expensive offerings you can choose from right alongside the Multico red offering. And speaking of Tesla price increases, the company also just increased the price of the long range Model Y by $500, which may suggest that a sign of more price increases could be coming very soon. Many have speculated that after a steady decline in Tesla pricing over the last few years, that the company has caught up to demand and now they're looking to sort of levy things off a bit by increasing prices even more. And maybe this $500 is a warning for owners to get their orders in now before prices go up. In fact, we just saw the Model X Plaid go up $5,000 just a couple of days ago, um, basically out of the blue, suggesting more price increases could be coming. Also, if you are ordering a Tesla, a couple of things to keep in mind is that one, Tesla is warning that federal incentives may be changing with the new year. So if you do want to lock in that $7,500 federal tax savings, you should put your order in sooner than later. And also, I don't think this is new, but just if I haven't mentioned it before, one of Tesla's new policies is that in some markets, they're not able to charge their vehicles as much as they should be able to. So when you take delivery, you might not have an adequate charge. But in order to make up for this, Tesla's offering those customers affected 100 miles of free supercharging. Some free supercharging miles in addition to three free months of full self-driving beta and full self-driving if you use a referral link down below. Shameless plug if you want to use mine. You also get a discount, $500 off your Tesla purchase as well. Also on the theme of shameless plugs, I'll keep this quick because my Tesla EV newsletter, my weekly newsletter launches today. Today is the day, teslanewsweekly.com. Go there, sign up. It's totally free to get some awesome Tesla 
insights and news uh, from yours truly directed uh, to your inbox automatically every single month. Uh, launching this with our inaugural partner, Drive Protected. They make some amazing DIY PPF uh, kits for your Tesla you can install in the comfort of your own home. If you want to check out Tesla News Weekly, link down below. And also Drive Protected, link down below as well. Would not be possible without them. So a big thanks to them for helping me uh, make this happen and uh, excited to launch this today. It's free. Sign up. It'd mean the world to me. All right, moving on from that, we've got some pretty big info here, some leaked info from Tesla on some significant changes coming to the interior of the Model 3 Performance and maybe the Model S and Model X Plaid. This is a big announcement from Tesla that they didn't want anyone to know about because they did this accidentally and they have since changed their service manual, but already leaked out and here's what we know. We'd seen some renders leak in a Tesla app update recently that showed an interior difference between the standard range rear wheel drive and long range Model 3, and then also this new rumored Model 3 Plaid, Model 3 Performance, or likely will be Model 3 Ludicrous, with seating that is different with some different bolstering uh, around uh, the seats. And uh, now it looks like we've got our best look yet at the actual seat itself. These seats are rumored to be going in the Model S Plaid, but many have speculated that these could be potentially maybe the same seats, if not similar seats, going to that Performance Model 3 as well. These seats are definitely unique. They've got that unique bolstering on the side that are uh, definitely more sporty. It seems like it's a thinner, sort of taller seat, and also has this cool sort of plaid emblem, ludicrous emblem built in here that really signifies that these are plaid vehicles capable of top speeds, and just to make the interior of your Tesla a bit more more comfortable and a bit more sporty. We've also got more confirmation that Tesla is working on some small but significant updates to the Model S and Model X. Tesla hacker Green the Only has once again confirmed that both of these cars are receiving two big new features. One is going to be interior RGB ambient lighting, similar to what we've got in the new refresh Model 3 that sort of extends around the dash. You can choose your own color, uh, looks super cool and adds a nice uh, sense of ambiance to those vehicles. And also more practically speaking here, a new feature is going to be a front bumper camera. Now, there's been a lot of weird speculation about this front bumper camera because it's been on again and off again with Tesla's vehicles for a while. We know for sure that Cybertruck does have this front bumper camera because we've gotten spy shots that show us very clearly what this front bumper camera's vantage point looks like from within the Tesla UI itself. You might remember the Model 3 refresh when it launched had the front bumper camera in renders, then Tesla removed it, then it was back, then they removed it. As of right now, for those who have taken delivery, the front bumper camera is not there, just disappeared, doesn't exist. But there is some speculation that because these cars have hardware four and because the front bumper camera seems to be a part of the new hardware four system, that maybe this is one of those instances where Tesla can do a retrofit of vehicles with hardware four and add this front bumper camera in later, and then obviously ship newer vehicles with the front bumper camera installed. Now that is purely speculation right now, we don't know. Okay, next I wanna talk about some big changes coming to the Model Y, because Tesla has made some very important announcements that are going to change the fate of the Model Y significantly over the next six months, and not exactly in a good way, and this story sort of first starts with the rollout of this new Model 3 because there are some changes there that are very controversial that people aren't happy about because Tesla is removing features. So let me start with that first, then I'll come back to how this sort of plays into the Model Y. Now, from what I've read from those who have taken delivery of this new Model 3, they love it. They love the build quality. They love the new features. They love the new design. Everything about this car seems to be mostly universally praised, except for one feature, something Tesla removed, and that is the stocks on either side of the wheel. Everyone seems to love the round steering wheel, and they don't like the yoke, uh, but they don't like the removal of those stocks. That means things like your windshield wiper controls, uh, your autopilot uh, activation and deactivation, and of course, your turn signal buttons are all delegated now onto uh, touch sensitive buttons on the actual wheel and no longer on those physical stocks, which certainly does uh, take some getting used to. And it seems like people are sort of in two camps. One group seems to get behind the wheel for a couple of hours, they get used to it, and they like the touch sensitive buttons and the stockless experience. I'm in that camp, I agree, I like it, and I think it's great and makes uh, driving a little bit more fun in these newer Teslas. On the other hand, are people who absolutely hate this change. They love those 
those physical stocks. They hate having to swipe up and down on the screen to indicate the direction they're going. Smart shift technology maybe isn't their thing. They don't like trusting the car with which way it thinks it's going to go. That's my wife. Um, she's taken a couple of drives in the new Model X and she just hates the yoke. She hates uh, the smart shifting. She hates the removal of stocks. She's not on board. And it seems like people are very uh, sort of divided in one camp or another on their thoughts on this change. Though what is very clear right now is that Tesla is all in on this change. Model S, Model X, the all new Model 3, they're all stockless. Cybertruck is stockless as well. And when the Model Y refresh comes at the end of next year, there's a 99% chance that that is going to be stockless as well. So if you're a fan of physical stocks, might not be a good time to uh, sort of get into the Tesla ecosystem because they are phasing stocks out as they continue to do with more and more parts of the car, whether it be radar systems, we've talked about before, uh, ultrasonic sensors and other things, Tesla's relying in good ways and in bad ways more and more on um, the existing components they have and uh, stocks are gone and some owners do not like this change. With all that being said, though, and despite a little controversy on the sort of the stockless thing, many owners of that new Model 3 absolutely love the car, which is great for the Model 3, but what this isn't good for is the Model Y, because as Tesla makes all these changes, the Model Y is quickly getting left behind. And while this still is, of course, Tesla's most popular vehicle, it's one of the most popular cars on the planet right now, as this new Model 3 gains traction, as deliveries now begin, and especially when it comes to the North American United States market, the Model Y is going to get real old looking real fast, which I don't think bodes well for that vehicle. And let me be clear, do not get me wrong here, I love the Model Y. It's a very versatile car, I love its hatchback, I think it's got a great design, the performance is amazing. Technically speaking, this has really great range, it's got great motors, it's got hardware four, it's a fantastic vehicle, but the Model 3 in the looks department and in the features department seems to pack so much more. You're getting that new design, you're getting the new interior, you're getting the new creature comforts, the faster screen, the ventilated seats, the rear display. When you compare the new Model 3 to the current Model Y we've got right now, things don't look all that good. The Model Y with its wood trim and its non-ventilated seats and the socks, which could be a win or lose for some people, the car just starts to look very dated and it looks like it's been a little bit unloved. And I think that we might see the Model Y change in a couple of ways because people are going to react uh, to this sort of you know new Model 3 and make a couple of different decisions. One is that maybe they'll go with the Model 3 over the Model Y because they want those features. Maybe people stick with the Model Y and buy this car right now, even though they know that not only is it inferior to the Model 3, but there is going to be an update eventually. We just don't know when it's coming or they could move to another electric SUV that's a bit more competitive for the price in terms of features. And that is what Tesla definitely wants to avoid because, well, they want people to buy Teslas, but when the Model Y starts to become a little less competitive, well, I understand why people might jump ship. And the reason I make this point and say all this isn't a fear monger. I, again, I think the Model Y is great, but I think that the Model 3 the updates here are not insignificant. They're not little updates. It's a huge design overhaul, something people really care about. It's creature comfort features inside that people really care about. It's a lot of stuff that really makes you stop and think, do I wanna buy Model Y or do I wanna go Model 3? Or if you need more space, you go Cybertruck. People don't want Cybertrucks and you look at other things. The Model Y is a fantastic car, but when you see all the Model 3 has to offer for a very similar price, if not maybe cheaper in some instances, it does make the Model Y look a little bit dated and a little bit of a tougher sell, which does make me a little concerned about the fate of the Model Y in the short term. We know that long term, uh, relatively speaking, Tesla is working on that bigger Project Juniper refresh, but in the short term, there's gonna be a bit of time here that the Model Y looks pretty dated. That is, of course, unless Tesla makes a little bit of a drastic change, which looks like they may be doing. In fact, over in China, they've already debuted a sort of stopgap refresh Model Y that adds RGB ambient lighting, it ditches the wood for a new soft touch material trim, and also gives you 19-inch black Gemini wheel covers, 
on basically the outside of those 19 inch Gemini wheels that does make this Model Y a bit different. And I'm very curious to see if Tesla does that same uh, sort of Model Y update in other markets as well. Right now it's just in China, but they could easily bring it to other places too. This also may be why we see new colors come just to the Model Y in the US coming from Giga Texas, because Tesla's trying to do all they can to make that car a bit more new, exciting and relevant. Um, and there are a couple options Tesla could take here. They could try to uh, ramp up production on this Model Y Juniper as fast as possible, though it's still probably a year away at the earliest, according to insiders. They could release a stopgap update, which would be great, but still not sort of a, you know, really good apples apples comparison. Or they could do nothing. Maybe they lower the price. Maybe they do different incentives. Or they just keep it as is because it's selling so well and no one bothers to care about what they could or could not get if they switched. I'm not sure, though I am curious to know what you think about this and your thoughts. Am I being a little critical on this? Am I on the right path here? Do you think the Model Y becomes less compelling and less competitive because it doesn't have all these features? If you had to choose between a Highland Refresh Model 3 and a Model Y, would you go one way or the other? I'm curious, let me know your thoughts down below and what you think Tesla will do with the Model Y and its fate. Uh, over the next couple of months. Do you think they're going to make some kind of stopgap update? Should they do some kind of refresh? Let me know your thoughts because I do think things are going to change for the Model Y in the short term and maybe not for the better. Though you let me know down below your thoughts. As always, I appreciate you guys watching. Thank you so much. If you made it this far in the video, I want you to do three things. One, I want you to subscribe to the channel. Two, I want you to like this video. Three, I want you to leave a comment below warning people of the horrible Telegram scammers I'm getting in the comments. YouTube is worthless in trying to help me moderate these. And I've gotten, unfortunately, so many uh, stories of people who've gotten scammed out of money from these Telegram scammers. So here's what we're gonna do to fight back in this video. I'm gonna do something special. I'm gonna pick two of you to give uh, $25 of Amazon gift card money too. I'm gonna pick two people, so $50 uh, total, um, $25 each. I'm gonna pick you guys in the comments below, and your comments, I want you to say something cool about Tesla or say, hey, I'm at the end of the video or whatever it is, but also leave a comment to say, don't fall for the Telegram scam or something to that effect. Don't, um, you know, listen to the you win comments from Telegram. Don't click any links. Don't message on Telegram. Let's try to fight back these bots together and also do some legitimate giveaways in the process. I'm so sick of people getting scammed. I want to fight back. And this might be a great way for us to do that together. So I think it'd be fun. Let me know your thoughts down below. And if you made it this far in the video, help me fight back against those scammers in a fun way. And also I'll give away some money to you guys. So thank you uh, for supporting the channel and watching me and doing all this. As always, guys, thank you so much for your support. I appreciate it. I'm Robert Rosenfeld, and I'll see you all in the next one.